let's do it. Cool. So basically the idea here is that the I love the brand. I love Ortley. Great, like the best technical bags for cycling and for outdoor, mostly for cycling, weatherproof, um, and very iconic, probably due to the waterproof construction, you get very iconic products. And just a total lifestyle brand. It's a very pure product. You can see their Instagram is just awesome. Just tons of like, tons of love from their uh, from their uh, consumers. And I looked into their kind of their primary featured products, and I saw this big gap, which they've got a big outdoor, they've got technical bicycle mounted, and they've got more urban. But what they don't have is this huge new trend of shoulder bags. Everybody's wearing sling bags. And what I found is in the past, they have this offering here, which is, I feel like it's way too technical. It's a beautiful product, but it's very specialized in that way that it's just tons of features, way too, way too uh, technically um, loaded with specs. You'd really not be that inclined to carry that around every day. And so I, you know, there's some waterproof uh, bags at this size that are on the market. So it's definitely doable. And so I, you know, I just, just kind of, this is really just a quick sketch, a couple of ballpoint pen sketches. And the, my whole concept is built on this idea of iconic form through some technical function with their products. It's often a closure system that gives it that iconic look that almost a 3d logo. And in my case for a sling bag, for a shoulder bag, I wanted these handles everywhere. And that gave it just this really cool crenellated kind of silhouette, which, you know, I just feel like it's pretty modern. It's pretty urban and it's incredibly functional. You can grab the bag from any side to carry it, to hold it, to work the zippers. You're never at a loss getting the zippers open or, you know, pulling the bag in and out of a car or pulling it out of your lap. And so from this, and these are just, these are, these are quick. These are just ballpoint sketches with a little Photoshop on them to look at some materiality to make sure that I like it. And then I just jumped in and uh, very quickly sketched these forms out. Um, the, 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 the cost and the detail really happen here in the back construction because you're mounting to a waterproof bag. So any holes, any seams obviously have to be done very well. And what I did was integrated the pads to kind of hold it off your body. Um, I integrated that construction with the handles. The handles would have a, it's tubular ballistic nylon that you stitch down over a piece of rope. You could even put um, some, uh, let's say some recycled plastic tubing in there to give it this nice structure here at these joints where you see the stitching. And the belt as well is integrated into this construction, which you really only hard mount in two places to the bag. So really limiting the holes you punch in your waterproof bag. And then of course, these beautiful waterproof zippers that everybody loves with a nice big fat pull tab that you can get your fingers around. Your zipper pulls are always, they have to be a bit heavy duty because the zippers start out pretty stiff. And then yeah, you don't really need logos on or leaf bags because the material and the technical details really give them that recognizable quality. But that's it. And I guess, I don't know what, like from, from your side, if you guys carry these bags, like carry shoulder bags personally or messenger bags, like what do you think yeah. in terms of size or number of pockets or the overall concept, grab handles? Yeah. I, w I mean, I was just going to say right off the bat that I love the grab handles. I mean, it's so, it does hit that unique mark for sure. And, mm. and the functionality as well. I mean, I, it's, it's, it, especially for just like an activity sort of focused, uh, you know, bag like this too. I mean, being able to grab at any angle, any, any spot is, um, I just imagine that totally being used, um, you know, when you just want to get up and go and just, and just grab it from anywhere. Uh, you guys ride? Are you guys are you guys like everybody else? Do you guys have fixed gear bikes now or single speed bikes now? I was actually just going to mention. I, I just purchased a you know a mountain bike and I've been doing that every morning. And I feel like in in Europe and Asia, the slingover bags are used more for like a day to day use yeah. case. 
But this size here is perfect for me because I can throw in some Allen wrenches, some water bottles, like the things I actually need for an activity. Um, whereas, you know, one of these other bags traditionally would have been probably too small. Yeah, it's a bit, it is definitely a bit small for serious riding. You see that in the bag they have. This mm -hmm. guy's got this massive uh, compartment here that, uh, I, you know, to, to me, I mean, look how big it is. When he opens it all the way up, like, you can fit your full-size laptop in there, which if you're mountain biking with a laptop, okay, <laughs> not realistic. I, I think that you bring up a really good point, though. I don't know if that was you, Jaron, or if that was you, Emil. Uh, that was me. Yeah. Okay. Well, I know that for bags, when, just like you mentioned, at Adidas, for example, we would always start with modules. Well, look, it's a bike bag. Okay, so standard Allen key set, standard patch kit, mm -hmm. standard tubes. And with this bag, because the shoulder bags are just everywhere, mm -hmm. really, it's like a smartphone, maybe a, maybe a, you know, your wallet, your smartphone, keys, some change, and whatever else you happen to collect or pick up during the day. Um, those would be the modules because I, I, I see that they've covered that. These bags, you can see the, the two bottom bags in their featured products. Clearly, it's an airbook. It's a, it's a laptop. Yeah, definitely. What I, what I also like is you have, this, um, you have this frame here, and I keep thinking, like, what are the different functionalities that could be incorporated with, you know, a frame like this, a somewhat flexible frame like this, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, could this be with a couple of canabiners or, or maybe even a change of how you use the strap, be strapped, strapped to uh, like uh, the frame of the bicycle. Yeah, or, I was just um, thinking the same uh, thing as well. Even even slung over the back seat of a car, you know, because at the end of a right. ride, of course you have your, your helmet, it's all sweaty, you have like a towel that you're sitting on and then you could just sling this over the, the headrest of the car so that it hangs or in the back. You stuff a wet pair of socks through one of them. I. Mm, I actually like what uh, what you said with the strap because I did kind of think, well, if I'm mounting the strap behind the pad and I'm mounting the handles behind the pad, you know, it just becomes a puzzle back there. Exactly, it becomes a puzzle back there. But what if the sh if the strap and the handles were actually integrated more as a as a single thing? Like the the strap didn't mount separately. If the strap attached to the handles instead, like if you just came right off, let's see what I got for it drawing to it but if the strap itself was just coming right off like that that could be that could be interesting yeah and you could move it too like you said maybe it mounts maybe it mounts here but then maybe you do it here as well for yeah. whatever reason you can carry you know, the backpack that way too you know what's also cool you have um so if we look at this blue model here i wonder what it would look like if you connected somehow this center part and actually had a, like a, like some, I don't know how to explain it, like sort of like a train track going all the way around the, the frame of this as well. So then it, it could slide, this handle could like slide along it at different all the way around. That's interesting. Ooh, you, you, you need a bit more plastic hardware, but you could do a mount, like you said, not a, like a monorail, let's say, right? So you have like whatever structure here. Yeah. And yeah, like you're saying, let's see, let's group that. So like you're saying, this thing would just ride all the way around. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's oh, that's so sick. You could literally do like a kind of a press, like a snap, like a cam lock. So you slide it and then lock it down. You'd have like a little, um, like a little cam. And so you would run this. That you'd open your cam, slide it like here, lock yeah. it down. That's that's really sick. That's pretty sick. Because if you did two of those, you could make this also a, like a rocket bag, like a backpack. Yeah. Let's say you're, you have it really stuffed with like tools in a water bottle and it, it gets a bit uncomfortable. Maybe you, you'd sell two strap kits. You'd sell one. You'd sell, it would come with a sling, but then you could buy aftermarket. Oh, that's actually, yeah. If you had the added functionality, right, for the straps, then if you think about it, this whole bag here, could be rotated like this for added exactly. functionality and something could exactly. drop out the back here. Exactly. And then it becomes like a de facto backpack as well. Like it, so if you're traveling, you can just, <laughs> yeah, you could hop on a plane with this, but then come back with way more stuff because it has the ability to switch into that. 
Well, I, I love the functionality of a sling bag as long as the weight is not too high. My problem is if you buy a full size sling bag, you mess your neck up or your back. Yeah. I, I love the idea of something in between. I don't like small backpacks because I'm a big guy and I look like a gorilla with a little backpack. But every once in a while, if it's really overloaded and I'm on the mountain bike, it would be nice. I think what I need to do is think about, it's a great point, but I need to think about doing a strap system that can do both backpack or single with just a, like your slide. I love this idea of like uh, proprietary hardware. Mm-hmm. Um, cause that's orderly. It's, it's totally their thing. They do all sorts of mounting hardware, plastic hardware, and it could be a really innovative, innovative system that you could use on multiple bags as well, shoulder bags and whatnot to switch from left to right handed. For sure. For sure. Nice. Yeah. I've, I, man, I've never even heard of this company before, but yeah, their products are so technical. Yeah. They're great. It's the, the it's really good stuff. And the beautiful thing is if it's very, very industrial design, in other words, the functions are well thought out, very beautiful details. Mm-hmm. They just, they're bomb proof. And you see these bags, you know, two, three, four, five years old, still in use, just getting yeah. used enough because people love them. That's awesome. That's, it's just kind of like Patagonia, right? Like, it doesn't matter what your an item is for Patagonia, yeah. like, it's still valuable. Yeah. 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 Not too much emphasis on like lingy branding and the, the form itself is iconic. But like you said, because you pointed to this idea of the straps, and since that's really the core of this idea anyway, are these iconic grab handles. If I if I actually, because I oversimplified it with the strap just being old school. Yeah, I definitely like the idea of, of a modular system, a monorail. You could even give it a cool name. Yeah, yeah definitely. Like the monorail. monorail. Yeah. <laughs> I know the mono, mono, mono is a disease, right? Like a cellular disorder? Maybe not mono. The monorail, the bi rail. Ooh, bi rail. I like it. Yeah, this thing just, I don't know, it just seems possible, right? Like that it, 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 it could do so many different, it could fill so many different voids like you have here of, you know, backpacks. Because honestly, I've been in the market for a good backpack for a while, but I just feel like I'm, I'm either sticking to this or I'm sticking to this. You know, like I, there is no good in between. Right. Well, the bag, I mean, the product itself is funny, right? Because like a bag is by definition an empty shell and the user determines really in the end, the user, unless it's a golf bag or unless it's a, you know, a tennis bag. Exactly. You know, these bags, you don't know what people are carrying in them. I think what helps from, not from the industrial design point of view, but more from like the product design, the distinction for me being what story are we telling? And what I love about this idea with the strap is that It's about fit. It's about comfort, depending on weight. So if you want to put two water bottles and your tools in there, you're going to run it as a small backpack. But if you're just flipping up to the store for, you know, to to grab some, like one of those little sushi boxes as a, as an abstract example, then you're going to do um, a shoulder strap because there's no weight. Right. And it's easier. It doesn't, you don't look like a school kid with a backpack on. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, would it be would it be useful in some cases, like if you're really say you know maybe not it's a, maybe it's not a quick trip, but you want a little more um, you want a little bit more sort of compartments. Um, like, what if you were had like some a smaller a proprietary smaller pouch that you could attach sort of to this front, sort of to this like area, just like about you know, about there, would that even be useful? Do you guys think? Sure. I think there's a, that's a whole, like the military bags have like a Molly system or pals webbing. There's no reason you couldn't, um, propose something that like that, that worked actually with the, the, um, this monorail with the monorail system. Yeah. I think it's just another iteration of what you guys have just been saying. Just like, pouches and compartments that could be added if people wanted. But yeah, I think it's, I think it's a uh, super cool design and just like it, I mean, just to go back to what you originally said, you're going, I mean, you're just going for this really unique iconic look. It totally, I think hits that for sure. 
Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, I love it. I think what I, I think what's funny here, the, what are they, like the uncanny valley that happens presenting to you guys here, is I see we kind of lost Emil for a second because <laughs> he's <laughs> over there pooping, he's over there pooping something. And he <laughs> definitely wouldn't do that. There, it kind of blurs the line between audience and um, and uh, participant. Yeah, because you can actually just start. You know, like, well, what if it, what if it fit like that? What if it fit like that? And instead of it's just throwing comments up, I see we've got already, we've got the first uh, stages of a, like an expansion piece or whatever here. I right. right. You have to blow the bottom out. Have, have either of you guys um, done any, um, like, trekking by bike where you're out for a couple of days or you're out for a couple of weeks? No, that's the next plan. I mean, I do backpacking. I have not. Right, but that's totally different thing. Well, they call it bike packing. Yeah, I would, I would love to do that. Uh, have you seen some of the new bags, these formed shapes that no, they maximize no. the space on the bike in front of the handlebars, behind the seat, in the frame? Mm-hmm. I have They're not seen that, no. Really, really beautiful. This would certainly fit that, that idea that it can sit in the, let's say it can sit on the handlebars, but then you can just tear it off and throw it over your shoulder. Man, what's really great here is like for the next round of like, I, I guess, some um, reviews, it's so simple for you to just take like one of these, one of these guys here with the bike model and then mock that, that same idea up already with the geometry you have and mm-hmm. just tell that story within, you know, a couple of minutes, which is, you know, just amazing to me. Yeah. Well, how, you guys, how long have you guys been using the, um, the tool? Uh, let's see. I started, um, Probably early 2019, I used to work at Honda and uh, James Robbins brought it in and it just absolutely blew my mind. Like, I I just, I don't like CAD at all and I couldn't understand what this tool was and why I kept going back to it to learn it. Um, But yeah, I was learning through exploration and within a week I was like, I know this tool. That's never happened before, (laughs) you know. Yeah, yeah. So that's my that's my exact same thing. And Jaron, you also said it's just been a couple years for you as well. For me, yeah, it's been probably three and a half years now. Um, and I was I was in school at the time, and there was a senior student using it, and I was like, "What is that?" And he was like, "He's like, here, try it on." So I like put it on, and he said, "Now just draw a stroke." And so I drew a stroke, and then everything, <laughs> the stars aligned, like. <laughs> Every connection was made after that. I was like, this is, this is going to yep. change things. Yep, yep, yep. Mine was a baby seat. I put a headset on in a store and I'd been working on a high seat project for several weeks. And I had the headset on, I opened the software and sketched seriously, like 30 seconds, the, the kind of the general form. And it was like, uh, okay, <laughs> it was ridiculous because the proportions were there. The scale was there. It happens so fast. Yeah, I mean, you're just, you're knocking, like, I don't like to mention this to people when they, when we're first explaining the tool, because I think it sounds a little, I don't know, grandiose, but um, you're, you're doing almost every part of the design process at the same time, right? I'm evaluating scale. I'm evaluating form. I'm sketching. I'm evaluating, uh, you know, human factors. Uh, I'm looking at the design from every single angle, scale, you know, possible. And I'm doing this all 15 times faster than I would with any other choice because every other choice of tool is specific to a certain domain, right? Like this is the only thing that splits between everything. That's the scary part is that anyone that uses it once who's even done a day of industrial design, they realize that this isn't, this is not kind of an evolution of, of the tool. It's a revolution. And mm-hmm. I have to pace myself. Like I, if I feel myself starting to talk about this too much, mm-hmm. then I put good music on, I put my headset on, and I build a bike. <laughs> or I build yeah. another helmet or I build another bag because it, I guess it's either you want to evangelize it. I mean, you guys have to. It's your job. Mm-hmm. But I have to use these tools. Like uh, if I'm going to interview for a back design position or for eyewear position, then I'm going to just show up and knock people's socks off with like a presentation like this, where they look through my quest, for example. 
And uh, for a lot of people, it's their first experience with VR. And when that experience is to see their products in a way they hadn't ever even anticipated or thought of, it's a little, it's a little frightening, I think. <laughs> I think for yeah, some, yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you hit it, you hit it on the head there. Like, and Jaron knows this is, uh, you know, we do not scream about gravity sketch, right? Like we, we've, we've noticed we need to tone it down a little bit too. Um, and even the tasks that we give people or uh, the examples that we use of what it can be used for, we have to say, Hey, it does not replace CAD won't replace sketching. Please don't be afraid, you know, uh, <laughs> and, and just sell it in a very palatable way. Yeah. 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 I was just going to ask you now your experience in, in, in some of your other presentations of, you know, of clients, um, and just how that generally seems to go and, you know, like their reactions and you're kind of touching it on, on it there a little, um, already there, but, um, yeah, well, you were at Honda. Honda. Emily, you said you were at Honda, right? Yep, Honda Advance. So, uh, yeah, well, I grew up. I grew up in California. I studied product design in San Francisco. Oh, nice. I studied car design at Art Center in LA. Oh, and nice. so, you, if if you really want to stand out, you have to be innovative because everybody yeah. can draw. Everybody can do really beautiful models and gorgeous rendering. Half my teachers were from Honda, and it's. You got to bring more than just technical skills. And so you're always looking for an edge. And of course you want the edge to be your idea. You want the edge to be your, your thinking, the, the story, the philosophy behind it. But it's always shocking then if it's, let's say it's a new, a new piece of software or a new tool, the Wacom tablet or, I don't know. And I don't know, Copic. Everybody loved the new the Copic markers when they when they first kind of hit the market, and they had the little airbrush kit. And you, everyone's always looking for that little edge to help tell their story. And just by definition, like a story is creating a, a this fantasy world that someone can step into and see the vision. Exactly. Well, this is literal. Like you're you're literally like, let me show you. I've built. The world for you, even if your brain is absolutely shut off because you're, you know, just being pounded by uh, Excel. So long answer, your your uh, your question was my experience so far. I've really only presented the, I've only presented my work in a headset once or twice. And both times it just creates this weird kind of like silence, like people are like overwhelmed. <laughs> Um, they call back for sure. They're definitely interested, but I think they're literally just a bit overwhelmed. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah they, they don't know what to make of it. Like they're they're overwhelmed by the experience. That they're saying? Talking, they're, these, this is me looking for for uh, full time work, and so these are these are interviews. This is me coming to a client that's oh mm -hmm. doing design. And or they they're they're not designers, they're you know, they're marketing or they're company owners or CEOs, and they're used to their experience of design, which is, you know, we deal with these weird creative people, but they draw nice pictures and they get excited about our brand. Mm -hmm. And they try the good ones will tell really interesting stories. And then I come in and I show them this and they're they're a bit shocked. Like they're like, okay, that was, you know, that was amazing, but what is it going to cost me? What do I have to invest? But they don't even get to that stage. So it's all new. I'll have to let you know. Give me a couple of weeks and I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah, definitely. I'll let you know what people say. I mean, a place like Honda, I'm sure people see this and they're, they get it. And then they immediately start to push. Not, not, oh, not quite. Not quite, actually. So what happened at Honda was we brought it in. Some of the more, some of the older designers looked at it, <clears throat> tried it out and said, well, okay, you know, that's interesting. Um, and then walked away. But the younger designers, the interns that were there, hopped in and did not leave. I mean, it was kind of like whenever you, you drop a, a new toy in a uh, kindergarten class and like, you know, one, one kid's playing with it and then, you know, the other kid is very patiently marking down the minutes and, and yeah. saying, okay, exactly. all right. My turn, like get off of it. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we all had to find our own time for it. But, you know, everybody that, that was a little more open-minded picked it up in, you know, in that week. 
Do you, guys, do you know they had a, they had I did VR in 1996 at an arcade mm-hmm. in San Francisco, and it took about I waited for about 45 minutes to get to try it. I stepped up into this huge platform, and they put this giant headset on me in a backpack, and I was motion sick in like half a second. Yeah, because latency and everything, and um, the the. The difference now, I mean, you could put on a, a Quest headset that costs, really, for the tools and for what you get, it costs nothing. Less than a cell phone. It's ridiculous. And so, and there's there's no latency. It works perfectly. You can sketch ideas out so fast. Yeah, I don't know. Well, because we're not, the three of us are talking about it a little like designers. But in reality, what you guys, you guys are sort of on, in, on sort of a different uh, jam than I am. Like you gotta, you gotta push the software out somehow. Yeah, I mean, I, I wrote a, I wrote an article the other day. Uh, I'm sorry, last month. Um, with this, basically, uh, I'm, I'm on the EDU team, so I was covering this really interesting PhD work uh, that this one student did, um, where he he bought a, it was really crazy. He bought a Vive sensor and then he machined his own motorcycle buck, real world buck. I, I talked talk to that guy. guy. You did? Okay, yeah, <laughs> Philip. Yeah, he's, he's, he's awesome. He's awesome. But what the cool thing is, is like everybody finds a different style and everybody finds a different way of using it. Um, but one of the sentences in the article was basically just like, what convinced him to use this? Like another user, right? Right. right. That, it's it's a slower process, but I think it's, it's something that compounds, right? It just... The, the more that somebody's using something, the, the more influential someone is, and then they're using it and they share it and they, they start preaching about it. Like that, that's what changes the tides. And we saw it with Blender, right? I mean, yeah. 2000, 2011 or 2000, even like, yeah, even like 2013, Blender was kind of crap. Yeah. You know, like no one wanted to use that. And then very quickly, the functionality came out or even the functionality that was already there started to get preached through different YouTube channels and different designers and different people saying, Hey, I'm freelance now. I'm not working for a company and this is free. Like that's, that's a game changer for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Blender is amazing. Yeah, Blender is amazing. And, but it also goes back. I think it was, uh, I think it was Jaron that said that, or no, Emil said that, that it's, uh, I mean, it's, I don't want to say I'm not a CAD guy. Mm-hmm. I like to be a designer. I want to tell stories and, at Art Center, I learned you got to be able to draw, and I still believe that. Mm-hmm. I don't Definitely. believe it's. I don't think it's worth trying not to draw. People have been doing it since the dawn of civilization. Yeah, and you can see I love doing my ballpoint pen sketches, but a, a 3D software that is so close to that same feeling that creating in real time, right, is really pleasurable. Yes, and this you got you guys have taken such a huge step. Exactly. You've taken such a huge step towards, because I love ballpoint pen sketching. It's portable and it's easy and it's intuitive. And um, with a little practice, anybody can be good at it. You know, you just need a couple of months of, of focused learning. Um, not like solid SolidWorks or like some of the other competitive packages. Like I, I learned that stuff in school, but it didn't stick because I wasn't telling stories. I was entering numbers and right. Right. Being an engineer, which is cool. I'm happy that we have engineers, but the fundamentals still stand. Oh yeah. Yeah. And this is actually, you know, a discussion I have with, uh, faculty sometimes when they're first looking at bringing gravity sketch into the program as they go, Whoa, that's dangerous. Like kids aren't going to learn how to draw. And it's like, Hey, it's (laughs) like Jared just said, like, it's the same thing as before. Like, it doesn't matter what tool I give you. If you don't have good fundamentals, your design is going to look like crap. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, it just, uh, you know, if you don't have that and, and that's why sketching is always going to be a thing. Like you said, Noah, it's just, um, you know, this isn't a replacement for CAD or for sketching. It's, it's almost like something else. It's like, it, it's, in, it sits in this place of, of presenting in real life and space. You can really get an understanding for something. It's almost like the, it's almost like just really allowing you to just really work out your designs um, because they're going to be in the real world. And 
that's what drew me to it when I first was exposed to it in school was I was kind of like Emil's side um, of things where I wasn't really loving the CAD experience, even though I knew that, you know, it's, it's how things got get done. But yeah, you know, the CAD story, it's, it's, it, this, this isn't a replacement for CAD, but it's just like, it allows the designer to be and work out their ideas in 3d without the, you know, yeah. without the, the hassle of, of all the CAD tools, you know, because they're, they're yeah. really, that really, that's, that's really where gravity sits. Gravity sketch sits is, is, you know, designers just want to express their ideas and, they, and their ideas live in our world. And just the way that CAD has been made, it's, it's, it's been made by engineers and, <clears throat> and designers don't think like engineers generally, some do, you know, but, um, you know, that's why you find some designers that are just really crazy good at CAD and other ones that are just kind of gravitate away, for, away from it. But, but uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I just want to get to the good stuff, you know, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I don't want to be bogged down by anything. I just want to get to the good stuff. And this right here, this conversation, this visual presentation, and then, you know, being able to jump off of all these different ideas with other people, like to me, that's the good stuff. And yeah, I'm, not, I'm glad that it's even possible. But yeah, I think um, yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed this and uh, I've really enjoyed looking at these models. I mean, these are, these are insane. Yeah, and I hope I hope we can post these once <laughs> once they're you know available because yeah they're they're gorgeous. Yeah, yes. go for it. This is all this is all my stuff. So anything you guys want to do with this, is absolutely fine. I'm I just reconnected again. We have a whole bunch of people in the house. COVID lockdown and everybody's working online, so <laughs> I think it's it slowed the network down. But yeah, it was awesome to awesome to talk to you guys. Um, if you need any other material. For this just let me know yeah anyway. this is this is great noah and i just want to say thank you very much um for putting this together um and and putting this this presentation together and showing us your process and showing us your your thinking um and uh you know and taking time to uh you know to basically have this session with us today so i really appreciate that thank you thank you absolutely it's an absolute pleasure and i can tell we were all we we're all holding the, the geek out down to a minimum. <laughs> I hope you can tell how much I enjoy the software. It's yeah. a pleasure. All right. Awesome. Well, um, awesome. Thank you guys. And, uh, have a good one. I'll be, I'll be in touch uh, if there's anything else said, uh, but I think this is great. Awesome. Thank you very much. And thank you, Emil, for joining us as well. Um, it's been great. It's been a great discussion. Thank you guys. All right. See ya. Yo, ciao.